ಗೋಸ್ತಾವತಿಂ ರಾಧಾ ಕುಂಡಿರಿವರ ಮಹೋ ರಾಧಿಕಮಾಧಾವಸಾಪ್ರತೀಕೃಪಾಯೀಗುರು ತಂ ನಸ್ಮೀ ವಂಶಕಲ್ಪತರೋಗ್ಯಶ್ಚಾಕೃಪಾಸಿಂಧುಭ್ಯೇವೇಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮ ನೀಕಿಲಾಶ್ರುತಿ ಮೌಲ್ಯರತ್ನಮಾಲದ್ಯುತಿ ನಿರಾಜಿತ ಪದ ಪಂಕಜಂತ ಆಜೀ ಮುಕ್ತಕುಲೈರುಪಶ್ಯಾಮನ ಪರಿತಷ್ಟ ಹರಿನಾಂ ಸಂಶ್ರಯಾಮಿ ಅನಾರಿಪಿತಚರಿ ಚಿರತ್ಕರುಣಯಾವತಿರ್ನಾಕಲು ಸಮರ್ಪಯಿತ ಮುನ್ನತೋಜ್ವಲರಾಸಂಸಭಕ್ತಿ ಶ್ರಿಯ ಹರಿಪುರತ ಸುಂದರ ದ್ಯುತಿ ಕದಂಬ ಸಂದೀಪಿ ಸದಾ ಹೃದಯ ಖಂದರೆ ಸ್ಫುರತೋ ವಾಸಚಿನಂದನ ಅಜಾನುಲಂಬಿತ ಭುಜೋ ಕನಕಾವದಾತೋ ಸಾಂಕೀರ್ತನಾಯಿಕಿತರೋಪಮಲಾಯತಕ್ಷು ವಿಶ್ವಾಂಬರೋ ದ್ವಿಜಾಬರೋ ಜುಗಧಾರ್ಮಪಾಲೋ ವಂದೇ ಜಗತ್ ಪ್ರಿಯಕರೋ ಕರುಣಾವತಾರು ಲಾಲಿನಿ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಸ್ವರೂಪ ಗೌರಂಗ ಸುರಿದಾಯ ಭಕ್ತ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಪ್ರದನಾಯಕದಾಧರ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧೋ ದೀನಬಂಧೋ ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ 
गोपेशा गोपी का खमता राधा खमत नमस्त थे राधे वृंदवनादि श्री करुणमृत वाहिनी कृपया निज पाद जाम प्रदीयतम भक्त विहीनायापराध लक्षाय शिवताशाकमादितरंगमाधे कृपाई तम शरण प्रपना वृंदे नमस्ते शरणारविंदम वृंदे नमस्ते शरणारविंदम श्रीला गुरुदेव की जय श्री मन महाप्रभु की जय श्री श्री गौर नित्यनंद की जय श्री हरिनाम संकीर्तन की जय गौर भक्त वृंद की जय गौर Here my mother is commenting on the chat spectacular. <laughs> totally biased. <laughs> only, only child what to do. <clears throat> so, good morning to all of you. Welcome. Thanks for coming again for your precious time and attention <clears throat> trying all of us to engage in the entering to the fire of Harikatha. Harikirtan Satsanga. So <clears throat> today we are continue with our series of lectures connected to Gorlila. Mm -hmm. The Mother Prabhu extended that generous invitation to speak about how we can dive deep into Gorlila. Someone is waiting for me on my left, it seems. <laughs> Sorry, on the right. Okay. Uh -huh. So yesterday somehow we started with that, although we mostly concentrated on, on Sri Rai Ramananda's Tirubhag Mahotsav. Somehow it was a, a great way of uh, starting to introduce this non-introductory reality called Gaur Lila and Gaur Tattva, hmm? the, le the least introductory reality we may possibly conceive, as hopefully we can glimpse furthermore these days. <laughs> So we can fo we can increase our appreciation for for Mahaprabhu, who is basically the istadev of our Gaudiya Sampradaya. We are Gaudias. It has to do with with Godadesh, Goda Mandal, and all that happened here and happened there and happens keeps happening there for eternity. So today and probably tomorrow or another day, Dev Mandal will confirm later. We will continue exploring this uh, this reality of of Gaur Lila. Um, so, also I'll try to connect some points with what we have been studying at least one day, which is the Brahma Stuti, and we'll be doing that this day, so as to kind of interconnect all, all the topics we are sharing today. So, <clears throat> actually this topic of Gaur Lila and and the ultimacy of Gaur Lila, the supremacy of Gaur Tattva, Nityanadip, and all these related topics is something that I feel quite uh, called to, inspired to, and also I'm planning with the blessings of my Guru Maharaj, <coughs> hopefully with the blessing of all of you, to, to, to continue writing a second book project. Oh. So, so I, I'm actually I'm supposed to be here in a, in, a, in a tour promoting my first book, but I'm my mind is mostly on my second book. Right? <laughs> That's what, what what happens sometimes. No? And as I as I mentioned before, when I wrote my first book, it was kind of a child having a child. Although that's the only child I can have as a sannyasi. <laughs> but the whole process was like that, you no, know, like conception and all the all all the stages in between and after and so on. And sometimes. Parents have one child and already plan. Let's have a second one relatively quickly, so the two of them grow together. So something <laughs> like that is happening now. The first one came, but I'm I'm mostly thinking about this the second one now. <laughs> so, 
so I'll try it and whatever I will share today or tomorrow or the next day, we'll speak about this. It's kind of connected with some of the ideas that already are coming in mind for for this project. And also the model probably will try to suggest that in connection to the relatively recent installation of Sri Sri Guru Nityananda here. So in, in, as a way of also serving the, the local community and Hopefully, some of my words may inspire all of us to increase our appreciation for all that Gaur, Gaur Nityananda, Gaur Lila represent for us. We, we should never think we know enough about that, or, or we should never take for granted, as I like to say, Krishna consciousness. <laughs> so, one of the main intentions in sharing these ideas, as I mentioned already, is that Gaur Lila. Gore, Gore Tattwa is not only a mere bridge, a mere entry gate, entry point, a mere means to a goal. It is, but it's also <laughs> a goal unto itself. Of course it is. Prabhupada Nanda Saraswati Yukhap said, Yatha Gauda, Yatha Gauda Padara Vindam Vindeta Bhaktim Krita Punya Rasi Tatatata Sarpati Hridya Kashmat Radha Padam Bhujya Sadam Burasi you say the more you immerse yourself into the service of the feet of Mahaprabhu, the more you will emerge in the ocean of the service to the feet of Sri Radha. So that's one famous statement which points to this idea. Gaur Lila takes you to Krishna Lila. And it's perfect. I mean, we are celebrating that. That's our great fortune. If, if it wouldn't be for that, we wouldn't be here today in Insilanti sharing these topics. <laughs> But also the other possibility is there. There is a nice verse in, by Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya and Sarvabhoma Sataka after he was converted. <laughs> and you can see the degree of his conversion, but this type of verses, which unfortunately I have not committed to memory yet, but that's in the verb, verse lists. Uh, but he's saying basically the opposite, not opposite, but the other aspect. The more you go deep into Krishna Lila, the more you emerge in Gaur Lila. So, of course, there's not conflict between these two. The more you go deep into one, the more you immerse into the other. The more you immerse into that one, immerse, immerse into that one, the more you immerse into it. It's the same Lila. Krishna and Gaur are non-different. Raja Lila, Nadia Lila is non-different. So it's important to keep that in mind and not create in our minds some like dichotomy. Oh, you are speaking about a second person, a second Lila, but one is... Again, the most natural extension of the other. And we all try to make that clear, hopefully, these days. So, <clears throat> Gore and Gore Nityananda in particular, who is the presiding deity here at the Harmony Collective, of course, they are always in, as you can see, in, in celebration mode. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, you will never open the altar and they have their two arms <laughs> like that. Oh, okay. I'm tired of all of you guys. What's going on there? <laughs> So Shri Gorni Tinan is always celebrating. Sri Krishna is always playing the flute. Again, hopefully you don't open the altar and Krishna's like. <laughs> Sri Radha is always giving some blessings and so on. And so the point is the altar is an eternal portal for us. It's a window into eternity. So in eternity, they are always celebrating. They are always engaged in that. It's not that someday let's take a break from this Sankirtan or something like that. No. So they ex expressing this type of mudras, no? Like, basically means overflowing, no? overflowing, and that requires celebration, basically. Gorlila is all about celebration. That's a very nice way of translating kirtan. Kirtan is not just chanting, singing. Of course, that's part of that, but the inner fuel is celebration, overflowing. So overflow when you are full. Hmm, in this world, sometimes we are moving, as my Guru Maharaj likes to put, out of emptiness. We have some existential void, existential hole, <laughs> and we are running here and there trying to, whatever, take stuff or people as stuff <laughs> and make them fit into my existential hole. I have a hole with this shape, and I start to look for someone to fit in that shape. You know? And I see a person say, oh, you have exact same size form as my existential hole, and you're trying to... Feel it, feel it, <laughs> and so on. 
So out of emptiness, we are we are moving in this world, basically. That's what we call karma. Mm -hmm. Someone who may attain peace, you know, like a Buddha or something, they say, as my Guru will say, stop doing something and just sit. You know? when sometimes we are child, children will say, no, do not just sit, do something. But now, do not do something, just sit. No. <laughs> but the point is, because you can sit because you have no longer material desires that keep you running here and there. But on top of that, we have the dispensation of Guru Nityananda, which is you are so full that you cannot just sit. <laughs> you fall, you fall, you are overflowing in Ananda. That's, that's their path. Parama Karuna Bahudvi Jan. Nitai Kaur Chandra, Sava Avatar, Sara Shiro Mani, Kevala Nanda Kanda. So that's our Kanda. No, we don't follow Karma Kanda, we follow Gyan Kanda, Upashana Kanda, we follow Kevala Ananda Kanda. No, that's, that's the path of exclusive bliss. No. <laughs> so when you are so much full of that, you cannot just see it. You have to raise your arms and start dancing. You follow. That's a movement also. But it's a movement out of fullness and not out of emptiness. So follow my point. I mean, yes. and, and that's why bhakti is so difficult to understand at some point because it seems, I mean, you are doing the same thing as every person, interacting with the world. And for most of the people, it's transcendental spirituality means something that has to seem overtly transcendental. So you have to just wear a loincloth and dressing on ashes, and have long dreadlocks or something. I live in the nearby cave, and only then you are transcendentalist. Mm -hmm. But if you are a Gaudiya Vaishnav engaging in Jukta Vairagi and using everything with proper Samban, it's like, what's the difference between you and my, my grandma or something? <laughs> <laughs> and of course, for that, you have to pay close attention and go beyond the, the external form. Mm -hmm. Because especially Gaudiya Vaishnav will try to, with proper Samban, will engage everything in Krishna service. Like when someone asked Prabhupada Bhaktisiddhanta, why you are riding a car? Because at that time, a sannyasi was supposed to walk barefoot everywhere. He was on a car, which was just a very brand, fancy, new creation in the world. And he was just, so why you are using a car? And he replied in a very Gaudiya way, he said, only Gaudiya Vaishnavs should use a car. <laughs> only are we are entitled to do so because we have the proper orientation to understand what's the car it's a shakti of bhagavan who has to be used in connection to its source that's what we are doing i'm not driving a car i'm connecting shakti with shakti mom <laughs> of course no easier said than done you have to walk the talk no? be careful in the name of jukta Vairagya, getting entangled in the name of dedicating all this planet to, to Bhagavan. No, you have to be honest. But, but the point is that Gorni Tenanda's stance is fullness, no, plentiness, and they are celebrating like that's Lila, that's Kirtan. Lila means divine plane which has no specific purpose in, in, a, in a, I want to attain something because I'm empty. No, no, I'm so full that that overflows and becomes that celebration, like Rasa Lila in, in, in Braj. It's not that the gopis are empty, no, they have Prem. It's not that Krishna is empty, he's Atmaram. So they get together to celebrate their fullness. They not get together to do away with their emptiness. <laughs> so that's one thing. That's that's on one side is Lila, Kirtan, as opposite to the movement in this world, karma. Karma is more like forced work, if you will. We are impelled by the laws of nature to act and behave in one way or another. <laughs> And on the contrary, you have Lila and Kirtan, which is celebratory movement. As I like to put that. That's that's ideal of Sankirtan. It's a celebratory movement. When we say Sankirtan movement, it's not only movement as an as a group or institution, but it's a movement, not only physical, but the Sankirtan movement starts by having something moving in my heart. No. <laughs> so that makes my body move, and very many bodies and hearts moving that creates a movement per se, collective, harmony collective. <laughs> I'm just sponsoring the local <laughs> community here. But that's connected, of course. That's why Gornitinand is here, presiding over that. So, so of course, 
<clears throat> on one side, Warnington and are overflowing in celebration. And again, that overflowing becomes their dispensation, their distribution. That's the ideal of, of prachar. Prachar doesn't mean, uh, how to say, I impose something on you and try to convince about something that I may not be even myself to convince yet. <laughs> and I need the whole world. I need the whole. I need, I need to see the whole world chanting Hare Krishna, so I get so further I convinced. <laughs> I must be doing something good because everyone else is doing that. <laughs> be careful. <laughs> Preaching should be done on the basis of real universal compassion, not so much like lack of faith from my own side. So I need all of you guys doing that same thing. So okay, I must be in the right place. All of them are doing that, so it's okay. You are confirming my lack of faith, if you. you know. <laughs> but real prachar means I am so full that that starts to overflow me and starts to sprinkle other people, and becomes contagious. That's how Mahaprabhu did it. Sometimes he was termed by some scholars as epileptic. He was not actually an ecstatic. He was epileptic. All these seizures and, but my Gomrash likes to say, but epilepsy is not contagious. <laughs> <laughs> but whoever saw Mahaprabhu crying, dancing, they will fall into the same quote unquote epilepsy. So epilepsy is not contagious. <laughs> so that was Mahaprabhu's way. Prachar. Prachar means pra achar. Achar means behavior, and pra means a very special type of. So interestingly, we translate sometimes prachar as preaching. <coughs> Although that's not the term, I appreciate Madhavananda Prabhu once he gave a lecture. We do not preach, we engage in prachar. And prachar, interestingly, we may say preaching, but actually means a special type of behavior that by itself, by its own speciality, transforms the hearts of others. And that was the standard of Mahaprabhu as we spoke these days. He sat in front of Sarbhavoma Bhattacharya, <laughs> how he preached to the greatest logician on earth. Just how he converted, he not only preached, converted him, how? Silent. Silent for a week. That was his preaching. He didn't need to say anything. He just sat for a week, and the greatest logician on earth was totally converted to Gaudiya Vaishnavism. That was just why, because he has such a strong con conduct, prachar, achar, that that was exuding from his pores and converting the greatest personality. <laughs> Then he converted to how Venkata uh, Vata in South India, how just joking. Mm -hmm. uh, Why Lakshmi was not able to enter us? Uh, checkmate, come to the Gaudiya <laughs> camp. <laughs> <laughs> Prakasananda Saraswati, he was just sitting on one side with total humility, didn't say anything. He converted him and his 60,000 sannyasis. So <laughs> that was Mahaprabhu's prachar. He didn't need to say that much because his example spoke louder than, than precept. So my point is, that's real prachar. No, prachar is you are so full about in something that starts to overflow you, overflow, 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 starts to sprinkle other people. And that thing that is touching your heart naturally will touch other one's heart because it, first of all, is touching your heart. So if you are really convinced about that in your heart, that will reach others' heart. So that's how Gorni Tinanda are conducting their epidemic campaign, if you will. No? You know how Nityananda Prabhu will do that. I mean, he even waited, he even didn't wait for the Goswamis to write all the Bhakti Grandas, as you know. That happened eventually. But Nityananda and his associate, Dwal Sagopals and so on, they went to Bengal, knocking at every door. No, he, he, strongly, he didn't, they didn't do. <laughs> they were like, <laughs> no? and you may open like, Baja Gauranga, Kaha Gauranga. <laughs> And converting everyone in that, you know, like just crying and you chant, chant the name of Gorang and I sell myself to you. <laughs> imagine Nityananda Pooh knocks on your door at home and tells you that. And you don't need to imagine that that's going on, that's happening. Hopefully you you hear that knocking. <laughs> Every time the altar is open, Nityananda Pooh is doing saying that to you basically. <laughs> so, so Nityananda Pooh is giving Mahaprabhu to the world. One of the famous mudras of Nityananda is also this one, where he's fully given Sri Chaitanya Dev to everyone. And Mahaprabhu is tasting, as we know, the, the highest limits of Sri Aurhada mm -hmm. And, by, ex and he, by, by that tasting, he's extending the possibility of tasting uh, 
and the highest possible reach of his experience for us jivas. Mm -hmm. So, anyhow, this is some an introduction to the topic today. I, I got a little bit sidetracked, but lost and found, fortunately, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> so, as I was mentioning, uh, Gaur Lila for us is. Yeah, it's the door to the goal. As we say, yes, they can be seen as the pearly gates to, to branch to the Krishna Lila. Um, and, and one of the features why this is so is because all the members of the core Lila, as we mentioned yesterday, who, who are eternal associates of Bhagavan in Braj, they are behaving as sadhakas, which is a very user-friendly situation for us. Now, all these perfected beings in the Braj uh, are appearing in another lila as practitioners, but not just practitioners, <laughs> but perfected beings acting as practitioners. Sometimes nowadays it's called sadhana siddha bhumi, or the land with perfected beings, siddhas, engage in sadhana. So what may happen if that's going to take place? Now take all these nitya siddhas, ragatmika, associates of Bhagavan in Braj, and put them in another lila, and now you become a sadhaka. So what will happen every time they say, Hare Krishna, what will happen? <laughs> All the things that the scripture is saying. If you just chant half a syllable, you pass out. Mm -hmm. but all the things happen in Gaur Lila at every moment. Mm -hmm. Someone once asked my Guru Maharaj, Guru Maharaj, Krishna Lila sounds pretty exciting. All these rendezvous and intrigue. and But Gaur Lila doesn't seem that, that much inter interesting, he said. My guru Maharaj said this, like, I mean, try to think about that. I mean, all the things that Shastra say that can possibly happen by just chanting Srinam, half a syllable, by associating with a devotee for, for a millis millisecond, all those things are happening in Gaur Lila in the highest possible way at every single millisecond. <laughs> so that's pretty exciting. <laughs> so for us, that's pretty instructive because, again, these Siddhas are appearing sadhakas and are allowing us to have a, a point of reference okay what does it mean to be sadhaka in every sense of the term and how we can aspire in that direction so Gaur Lila can be seen as the doorway to Krishna Lila and what's Krishna Lila a few words about Krishna Lila about Braj so we can further appreciate Gaur Lila I mean, that comes and goes. If you want to speak about Gaur Lila, you have to speak about Krishna Lila, as we were saying yesterday. For some devotees, may focus on Krishna Lila and not necessarily connect with Gaur Lila. There are many sampradayas also in that connection. But if you focus on Gaur Lila, there is no way you cannot avoid Krishna Lila. <laughs> so, as they say yesterday, two are but the price of one, basically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, what's Brindavan for us? Yesterday, we spoke a little bit about that. I, I like to quote always one nice verse from, from the Damodar Lila that Sukadev Goswami invokes, and that Sri Vishwanath Chakravar Thakur says, This is the Paribas Sutra for Krishna Lila. Paribas Sutra, remember what that, this means? Like uh, this statement, yeah, around which all the other statements have to be seen in connection to. So there is a Paribas Sutra of the Bhagavatam, who is Krishna's two Bhagavan Soyam. But Vishwanath Chakravarta mentions one Paribas Sutra for Krishna Lila, which happens to be in, in eighth, eighth chapter of the 10th canto, verse 45, for the verse maniacs. Traya Chopani Shabdischa Sankhya Yoga Shchasatvatai Upagiya Manamahatmyam Harim Samanyatatma Jam. Very simple verse, but given the, the, the thing. And it is he who is considered as the absolute truth by Veda, Upanishad, and all these different systems he is seen by Yashoda as her son. So to Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur is mentioning <clears throat> this is putting all Krishna Lila in context. In other words, Krishna is known as God by everyone except for the Brajavasis. <laughs> Yashoda is kind of representing the spirit of the Braj here. You know? So she cannot see Krishna as God. It's not possible. Don't try to do that if you meet, meet her at some point. Don't try to convince her. I mean, would have tried when he went to bring down, you know. He was not successful in that sense. He was successful in learning from the Prajavasis. <laughs> he thought, I'm coming here to teach us about something. 
and he realized, oh my gosh, I'm learning something. That's why Krishna sent me here. You know, something. I'm learning, I'm discovering a new Krishna, interestingly, because Udab served, was a minister, personal servant of Krishna in, in Dwarka. And he thought, I mean, I know Krishna pretty well. He's a great devotee. Krishna says about him, I love Uddhava more than I love my own self. So you can imagine how close Uddhava is. When he, when he went to the Braj and learned all the things, he discovered a new Krishna because he discovered another level of love for Krishna that corresponded with the form of Krishna. I mean, every type form of love of Krishna corresponds with one Krishna, if you will. <laughs> So he was accustomed with the Krishna that corresponded with the love of Dwarka. That was his Krishna. Now he went to Vrindavan and he realized, oh my God, I never knew about this Krishna. <laughs> I'm getting to know my Krishna much more now, full more equipped by the grace of the Brajavasis. So basically the idea is Krishna in Braj is the origin of all sources of divinity. That's what this... Paribas Sutra of Krishna Lila is implying. And in, in Braj, we say Krishna is two Bhagavan Swaya, we will add Gaudiya's Braja Krishna is two Bhagavan Swaya. Yes. <laughs> because you can speak of Maturesh Krishna, Dwarkesh, but Braja Krishna is two Bhagavan Swaya. That's the very source of all forms of divinity, as we are seeing in the in the Brahma Stuti when Krishna showed all these forms coming from Braja Krishna, basically. Hmm? So this is a very unique contribution of the Gaudiya Sampradaya. This Braja Krishna is the fountainhead of all faces of the Absolute. And this idea that, as I said the other day, Krishna is not an aspect of God. God is an aspect of Krishna. You have to accommodate that. <laughs> God, Vishnu, Narayan, generally that's God. Or Paramatma. Sometimes people think of God. He's mostly dealing with us and the world. And for us, that's Paramatma. Paramatma is the presiding deity over Maya Shakti and Tatasta Shakti, as Jiva Goswami explained. So, yeah, that's God. But Krishna is way beyond God. <laughs> God beyond God, if you want to put it like that. He's still God, but that's in the office. That's what's going on in the office. But Krishna in Vrindavan, he's God at home. I like to always make one joke in this connection. Maybe you already know it because that's the only joke I know, basically. Mm -hmm. It's a sedantic joke, so I'll share it with your permission very briefly. Mm -hmm. So once I tell I told it the other day. So those who were in North Carolina looking the lecture say, Oh Maharaj, again this joke. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will quote it only once in every single place I visit, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> Unless I learn some new one until until. Um, so there were two friends from childhood, and eventually one became the Pope, and the other one became a Gaudi Acharya. So they get to know about each other somehow, social media, whatever. So they organize to visit each other. So the, the Gaudi Acharya goes to the Vatican to visit the Pope. So they meet each other and start to share their respective spiritual journeys and so much to tell. I mean, after I don't know, 50 years of not meeting each other. So at one point of the conversation, there is one that the Gaudi Acharya notices something on the back of the corner on one side, and it's a red phone. So he says, the Pope, what's that red phone? It's like, and the Pope says, that's a phone to, for speaking with God. I know nowadays with cell phone, that a phone apart from the cell phone is weird, but try to play out the joke created 20 years ago. <laughs> there were no cell phones. There were only these, I'm these phones. Not to remember that. Sorry? I'm old enough to remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so the Pope said, do you want to try? Do we need to speak with him? And the go to the church and say, well, I can try. <laughs> so he speaks, but he was okay. He didn't, uh, he was mostly, he had, he mostly speak with God, but with his God, by chanting Harinam, that's his cell phone, basically. <laughs> So he spoke like 15 seconds or something, one minute. He said, okay, how much was the cost of the call? So the Pope said, well, like 250 euros. <laughs> <laughs> You're in Europe, no? So, and of course, that's pretty expensive. You're speaking with God. So, okay, go to uh, Acharya had made, did some Madhukari in the Vatican. He received something, so okay. <laughs> 
and returned to, to Branch where he was living in. So eventually another second and a second visit is organized and the Pope goes to Branch. Big event now. So the Gaudiya chair is taking the Pope to Parikram. Vrindavan leadership has hidden all the monkeys and pigs. Uh, <laughs> let's clean the Jamuna. Pope is coming. <laughs> Maybe we need to take the Pope to Branch so all the things are in place. <laughs> Once and for all. <laughs> Anyhow, so eventually they meet with each other. Um, in the Bajan culture of the, this Gaudi Acharya, the, the Pope sees a red phone. <laughs> he asks his friend, oh, this is what I think it is. He said, yeah, 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 I knew you were coming, so arrangements were made. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so can I try? The Pope said, yes, of course. Yeah, I need, I need to speak to solve a, a good amount of things. Lots of managerial stuff in the Vatican. I have to speak with Okay, okay, no problem. So he speaks like for three hours or something. Mm -hmm. So call ends and the Pope says, okay, thank you so much. And how much is the call? So the Gaudiya chair said like, um, 100 rupees. <laughs> like, I'm 100 rupees. I mean, that's like $2 or something. But I spoke three hours, 100 rupees. I mean, you spoke in the Vatican one minute, it was 250 euro, euros. And here in Braj, I spoke three hours and it's, one, 100 rupees? And the good teacher replied, yes, because here it's local call. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's the God we worship. <laughs> Ideas. Braja Krishna is God at home. That's my point. Local call. <laughs> so that, that's the idea. That's the contribution of the Gaudiya Sampradaya. The intimacy is such there in Braj that everyone, nobody's thinking about Krishna in terms of he can be God. And even if that happens, as we say yesterday, even if someone may suggest to Nanda Maharaj, maybe your son is God, apart from giving his arguments for that not to be so, he will end up saying, and even if he's God, first of all, he's my son. Try to imagine that psychology, that you are able to accept that possibly your son is God. But that's a secondary consideration. That's an upadi. <laughs> first, he's got, uh, first, he's my love. He's my child. Then he can be all the things he wants, even God. <laughs> but here, first, he's my child. And since he's my child, I have to educate him. I have to chastise him if that's required for him not to be spoiled when he grows. Uh, yeah, then he may be God and so on. But first, he's my child. You can imagine Uda's face when he was hearing this from Nanda Maharaj, like, what to say here? My God. Udava Bimohan Lila, basically. <laughs> Another Bimohan there, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, this is a mood in Braj. Now, I remembered all this in connection with Gaur Lila. So, in Braj, I mean, they do not only, as they say, worship Narayan and love Krishna. They do not worship Krishna. They love Krishna and they worship Narayan for the sake of Krishna. But even whenever Krishna exhibits some Aishwarya, the psychology of the Brajabhadis is such that their intimacy with Krishna grows. It doesn't shrink. No? Like it happened to, let's say, Arjun. Arjun is Krishna's friend. He's in a type of Sakyabhav, Puri Sambandi Sakyabhav, like city friend. But when Krishna showed, showed Bishwaru, I mean, Arjuna Sakya totally received to the background. He was crying and begging forgiveness for treating him like a friend. So that's the type of Sakya he has. But in Braj, if, if something like that will, will happen, Krishna's friends will just like, like joke. You know? Krishna will show universal form and say, what are you doing with that nonsense? I mean, you are wanted to play tricks on us. We know you. All this. <laughs> I think that when Krishna was lifting Govardhan, as we know, I mean, pretty Ashwari. You know, imagine your five year old child is high, lifting the whole Ypsilanti in one finger or something, you know, like, for a week with the smallest one. It's like, I mean, left yeah, left hand, <laughs> all the possible considerations to make it bigger contrast there. And none of them were thinking, again, what's going on here? We just so they were thinking, oh, you must be tired for 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 right for holding this month. Open your mouth and was feeling here. And, and his friends were saying, "Hey, put the put the go put the heel on the other hand now." 
it's already three days. They were, you must be tired. And they started like to massage Krishna's <laughs> arm. No? And or, or better, better, even better, they will say, give the give the whole hill to Sri Dam, who is stronger than you. <laughs> I mean, we know that you are all, all every day defeated in, in, in wrestling with him. So I mean, give the hill to Sri Dam, he can hold it. <laughs> So that's the psychology of Vrindavan, basically. None of them are thinking, how is possible that a child can be lived in a hill? They're just increasing their intimacy to Krishna. Even in the face of majesty, their intimacy is such that whatever you put on their way, it only the intimacy only increases. If you put intimacy, their intimacy increases. If you put majesty, their intimacy increases. That's Vrindavan's psychology. It swallows everything on their path and nourishes their own intimacy. That's the example given him. Um, put that of the lion feeding on the elephant. The elephant comes on the way, the lion feeds on the elephant and becomes more stronger. So everything on the way is, it represents nourishment for that. So again, that's, that's the God we that's the God we worship. Even if, if, if Krishna shows some majesty, Vishwanath Chakravartakur gives that nice example. Like a mother with his child, and the child becomes a president. So if the, if the child becomes a president, the mother will, won't will change her, but Salya, he will say, oh, Mr. President, good morning. Okay. Or he will say, oh, my boy, how, how wonderful now he's the president. No. But the first consideration is, oh, my boy. <laughs> then, oh, he became the president. Okay, oh, my boy. On the day he's speaking, even his first speech as a president, I want to bite my mother, and the mother will run and embrace and start to kiss. And he said, No, no, man, not here. I'm the president. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, he's still like, carries the president. I mean, so the fact that he became the president is increasing her motherly love. That's the point. But that's how it works with, with the Braj of Asis. Mm. So, with someone like Brahma, going for a minute back to Brahma, in the in the Brahma Vimohan Lila witness and prayed like we were studying a little bit here, Brahma Stuti. He was like awakening to the degree of and the quality of the love of Vrindavan. He will basically end up saying, Ahobagyam, Ahobagyam, Nanda Gopa Brajokarsham, Yanmitram Paramanandam Purnam Brahma Sanatan. Brahma still has some admixture of Aishwarya at this point. And he's saying, Aho bhagyam, aho bhagyam. The word aho is expressing like chamatkar, expressing like astonishment. And twice he said, Aho bhagyam, how lucky, how fortunate, how fortunate are these Brajabasis? Because he who is the supreme absolute truth, Purna Brahma Sanadana, has become their friend. No, they, they are treating, and this section of the Bhagavatam is pretty much Sakya Rasa center. Brahma Bimohan Lila, Agasur Lila, Denukasur Lila. You have these three main centers in the tenth canto: Batsalya Center, Sakya Damodar Lila, Sakya Center, Brahma Vimohan Lila, and Madhurya Ras Center, Ras Lila. Mm. So, so first Brahma is saying this. I mean, how fortunate he he's like totally overwhelmed about what he's just discovering here in Braj. and then he basically concludes his prayers in the Brahma Stuti, telling Krishna first. Two points, interesting points. Why? First one, what other reward other than you exists? You are the embodiment of all prices, Brahm is saying. And then, interestingly, he's, he's by appreciating the affection of the Brajavasis, he will ask, that said, how will you manage to reciprocate with the Brajavasis? How you will give yourself to the Brajavasis? Because, for example, you gave yourself to Putana. In such a way, and so on. Putin approached you like a trying to kill you, basically, <laughs> like a mother, but trying to kill you. The worst possible approach you could imagine to Krishna. I mean, just recently born baby, and you dress like a very loving mother and approach offering your breast milk, but actually, poison is there in the background in every sense of the term. Everything is poison. <laughs> The worst possible way you can do to, to approach Krishna. How how did Krishna reciprocate? Well, she, he gave Putana Batsalya Bhavingolok. Like, what? Totally. I mean, that's what we call Kripa Siddhi. You receive perfection without doing any sadhana. Do not strive for that. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case you, oh, I, I may join Putana's 
gone, put in a group. No, no. That's like winning the lottery. So don't strive for that. No, it's not like, okay, I won't work because someday I may win the lottery. To begin with, we don't we don't play lottery. So. <laughs> but just in case you were thinking, probably you won't win it. No, if you try as hard as you can. So, <laughs> so we are not of the Kripa CD club, basically. No, we want Sadhana CD. So, but the point is, you gave to Putana in such a way. I mean, you have offered her such a position, and she approached you with the worst possible intention. So now I'm seeing the love of the Brajavasis. And I'm wondering how you will reciprocate to them. If you gave such a thing to Putana, what will you give to them? Who approach you in such a way, in such a loving way? I don't know. I don't know how you will repay to that. And interestingly, Krishna doesn't say anything at that point. Uh, he's kind of, hmm, good question. <laughs> <laughs> How to repay to them, especially Brajabasis, Gopi, Shirad in particular. I have no clue. Oh. He's, at, he's not replying here. No, he's entering into, Cal, think about that. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's silent for a while. And his reply to that question, if you want to put it like that, will come, but a good, a few chapters after. No. This was presented by Brahma, asked by Brahma in chapter 14 of the Bhagavad. And after almost 20 chapters after in the Gita, in the Bhagavatam, the height of the Rasa Lila, Rasa Panchadhyaya, Krishna will reply. And how will reply? Don't lose context. We are actually speaking about Gaur Lila, <laughs> but there is no difference. I mean, all is in the context. Don't lose sight of that. So as you know, Rasa Lila, I will briefly mention this because, I mean, to speak about Rasa Panchadeya requires a few lifetimes. And hopefully we are willing to that. We have eternity supporting us. <laughs> and as you know, Krishna joins the gopis eventually. He plays in Sarat Purnim. He plays the flute. Gopis join. He sends them back home. They do not agree. <laughs> and Rasa Lila begins on some level. Eventually Krishna disappears from the scene with another gopi. Gopis are looking for him. They see these two pairs of, uh, how do you say? Footprints. Footprints, thank you. And eventually they find that gopi, who is Shirada, according to us, Gaudias. And uh, the other gopis find Shirada and they join her in separation from Krishna. They engage in Kirtan in separation from him. That's what we call the Gopi Gita. Shrayata Indira Sasradhi Daita Drishatam Dikshatavakash Vaidrita Svashanvichinvati and so on. Twenty verses like this. And after and Krishna is witnessing this Gopi Gita. The song, the kirtan of separation of the gopis led by Sri Radha. Krishna is camouflaged before a tamal tree, behind a tamal tree. He has Tamal complexion, no? dark complexion like a Tamal tree. That's why he's called Tamal Krishna. So he's camouflaging behind this Tamal tree and witnessing the degree of, of, of the gopis love blossom and flourish in separation. And he disappeared mostly because he wanted the gopis love to increase. I mean, that's pre their love is pretty increased already. <laughs> but the nature of love is that it will always keep increasing. That's interesting dynamics with love. You are full, but it can always grow. So that creates a unique sense of transcendental dissatisfaction. You follow? I'm full, I'm loving Krishna, but I can always love him more. So there's something always to be attained. So Krishna disappears, said, I, I love my gopis, I want the best for them. So wanting the best for someone you love is let your love increase. So he knew the, the best way for that to happen is I will disappear. And in separation, they will attain a new height of affection for me. And also second purpose is the world, we will witness this situation and the, the glory of the Gopi's love will be established clearly. And nobody, be, nobody will misunderstand this as a mundane thing. So mostly those were the purposes in Krishna's mind. But when he was witnessing the Gopi's kirtan, a new purpose came into his mind <laughs> that was not in the agenda. Uh, because he started to see the degree of the Gopi's love and especially Sirada's 
blossoming separation to such a degree that he started to wonder what's he experiencing? I, I, what, what's, what, what is she seeing in me that makes her be who, he, who she is? What's the, the beauty she perceives in me that creates these wonderful results, effects in her? Hmm? So Krishna started to think, I have to taste that. I want to experience that. I want to experience myself from Radha's perspective. So here we are in the height of Krishna Lila, the very apex of Krishna Lila, Rasa Lila. And in this high, high, higher moment of Krishna Lila, we could say, Gaur Lila is born. <laughs> so Gaur Lila born, quote unquote, again, this is not something in time, but it's a way of putting that. Now, in the highest point of Krishna Lila, Gaur Lila manifests. For you to understand, this gorilla is not just like some inferior thing. Uh -uh. That comes in the highest reach of Krishna Lila. Mm -hmm. So the point this Krishna is developing this new desire. I want to experience that. So he reappears amidst the gopis after the Gopi Gita, as we know. And he comes with his pitambara around his neck. You know, like, like, like if it, that's a way of when you are... Uh, how do you say, repenting on something wrong you did, like a criminal. In that age, a criminal, that time they put this cloth here, you did some crime. So Krishna is appearing in that way in front, humbly, in front of the gopis. And he's saying to the gopis, uh, I, uh, he's, at this point he starts to reply to Brahma's question, <laughs> you know, a few chapters back, how will you repay them? And Krishna said, how will I repay well, to begin with, <laughs> I will repay breaking my word in the Bhagavad Gita. I have to contradict myself. What did I say in the Bhagavad Gita? Chapter 4, verse 11. Yeah, tamam prapadyante tamstataiva bhajamyam mamabart manubartante tamstataiva bhajamyam manusya parthasarvasa. But the first part, he's saying, what? Well, according to how you approach me, I reciprocate accordingly. The way you worship me, I worship you. That he says in the Gita, and that's already pretty incredible. But here in the Bhagavatam, he's saying, I cannot sustain that statement any longer. In front of your love, he's saying to the gopis, I cannot reciprocate accordingly. I, I, I cannot. You are so exclusively surrendered to me, but I'm not that exclusively surrendered to you. I have so many other devotees I have to reciprocate with. I have my mom, my father, my cows, my friends, people in Baikuntha here and there. So I am reciprocated in so many directions. You are only pointing in one single direction. So I have to break my bow of the Gita. That's why Srimad Bhattan is like the <laughs> upgraded version of the Gita. The Bhattan, you will find Krishna saying things that he contradicts what he's saying in the Gita. <laughs> contradicts in a charming way, for sure. So he's saying, I'm not able to repay your love back. He's saying, He's saying, actually, I cannot repay back your love, the love you have for me, even if I will try in a day of Brahma. That's pretty long time. We spoke about this the other day. So I cannot repay back your love. Let your own love be its own reward. That's kind of the conclusion of the Bhagavatam. Love is its own reward. Not even Krishna. Love is its own reward. Even for Krishna. Our goal is not Krishna. Our love is love for Krishna. <laughs> Krishna Prem. Krishna Bhakti. So, so he's saying basically that. Your love for me is you have to be satisfied with that. It's such a reward that not only I cannot pay that, I mean, I cannot even start to conceive how much of a debt I have. <laughs> Try to imagine this. One thing is you say, I cannot pay the debt. Another thing is, I don't have a clue how much is the debt. <laughs> that means you, have real, you really have a debt. You cannot really know how much do I have to pay. <laughs> Krishna is saying here this, I don't have a clue how much do I have to pay, what to speak of paying that. So 
let your own love be your own reward, basically. Krishna is accepting his defeat, a defeat of, of love, basically. That, that's the God we worship, again. <laughs> I offer pranam to that Krishna who is rolling at the feet of Sri Radha and his pick of feathery full of the dust coming from Sri Radha's feet. I worship that Krishna, he's saying. <laughs> so Krishna is acknowledging, if you will, his limitations, <laughs> they are limited in Lila, Acknowledging his limitation, trying to repay back Sri Radha's prem. That was happens also in, in the very nicely in the the prem samput when Krishna disguises himself as a heavenly damsel and goes to Sri Radha and, and starts to, to to speak about, oh, you are so noble, so incredible, but why you are with that Krishna? He's such a rascal. <laughs> no? and, and 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 Sri Radha starts to express her love for him in such a way that Krishna starts to say. You love him that a lot, but he doesn't deserve you. And actually, Krishna is feeling that in that moment. <laughs> you follow. He's speaking as if, as if he's someone else, this heavenly damsel. But Krishna is saying, actually, I'm a rascal in front of you. Actually, I do not deserve the glory of you. I mean, we spoke the other day about costless grace <laughs> and how we will never deserve that. Well, Krishna himself is feeling that regarding God. He's feeling your love for me. I do not deserve that. It's costless grave. And he's dealing with that for eternity. So he's not asking that to us and he's not walking the talk. <laughs> God himself is doing that in the first place. So in this very famous verse of Krishna Lila, which gives rise, if you will, to, again, to Gaur Lila in the Bhagavatam, not only Krishna is saying this, I kind of measure the debt, I kind of pay the debt, May your love be its own reward. But another reading of the verse, according to Srila Sanatan Goswami, but in his uh, Brihad Bhagavatam commentary, he quotes this person. He said, Krishna is saying, I cannot pay your love even a day of Brahma, but I'll try my best. I will come, the, the Sanskrit lends itself for that interpretation. I will come once in a day of Brahma disguised as a sadhu and will try to preach the glories of your love and will try to make devotees for you. Krishna is saying to Radha. So of course, that means Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Krishna is saying that I, I, won't, I won't be able to, to solve my debt, but I cannot just remain like, okay, I cannot pay, I cannot do anything, so I just rest. No, no, I have to do something about that. So I'll try my best. <laughs> And, uh, and while doing that, again, while doing that, while trying to repay my debt, I also try to get as closer as I can of your experience of me, Krishna saying to that. I want to see what you see in me. That, that's a very interesting idea. I mean, my guru Raj likes to say, Krishna is having an existential crisis at this moment, in the sense that he thinks he knows him, <laughs> but he's seeing Oshirad oh, seeing me in certain ways, feeling certain things, and I don't know what what's there in me that makes her as special as she is. It's something in connection to me, I can tell, but I don't know. I need to be in her shoes, mm -hmm. basically. <laughs> I need to experience myself from Radha's vantage point, basically. Because as the saying goes, I think that you say in English, right? Beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Shirad is contemplating Krishna with certain eye, prem netra, we will call the, the eye of love. And beauty lies in the eye of the beholder, of Shirada. She's the beholder. She's beholding Krishna in a certain way. And Krishna is saying, what love is there in, in your eyes, basically? How you are seeing me? What you are seeing in me? I need. I want to know myself more by entering your shoes. <laughs> it's interesting. I mean, you generally won't find this type of questioning in any theological tradition. General theology is more about does God exist or not? <laughs> does God want to be God? Yeah, yeah. And here we are on another level, another place.
So that's how, in one way, Gore Lila is beginning in the height of Krishna Lila. How Krishna himself chooses to adorn himself with the mood and the hue, hue, you say, yeah. of Shirada. And Srila Siddharmaras will call that heart and halo. No? He embraces Radha's heart and halo. Radha Bhava, duty, Shubhalitam, Nomi, Krishna, Sarupa. Radha Bhava, duty. No? Her Bhav and her duty, Krishna tries to incorporate that. Krishna is known in the Bhavatana as Bhushana Bhushanangam. No? He's the ornament of all ornaments. He doesn't require ornaments, but the ornaments becomes ornamented by him. <laughs> but now that same Krishna, the ornament of all ornaments, wants to be ornamented by Radha's <laughs> mood and, and hue and so on. So, so that's a very unique idea. How, in another way, do you have a few minutes? No problem. Okay. You let me know if I'm it's too much. Eternity is supporting us. Yes, sure. Okay. <laughs> so she Krishna Das Kavirash Goswami, he mentions in Chaitanya Charitamrita that Krishna's beauty is ever increasing, as we mentioned, that's the nature of, of Krishna. Nitya Kishore, Nabajovanam and so on. He's always updating himself in terms of beauty. And the more Krishna's beauty increases, the more the service disposition increases in his devotees to serve that beauty. No? Because the devotees are serving Krishna's beauty, if you want to put it in that way. So his beauty reaches this point, the devotee's service disposition reaches this point to serve that beauty. And by Krishna reserving, receiving sorry, that loving service, that makes him more beautiful. <laughs> so his beauty is now here. No? And their service disposition increases. And Krishna's beauty increases. One is corresponding with the other. So the point here is Krishna's beauty is on one level, but Sri Radha serving this position is in another level. And that makes Krishna's beauty to reach a point where he has to become gore, basically. <laughs> we could say that Mahaprabhu is the byproduct of Radha serving this position. <laughs> It's a consequence of, of Radha's love that makes Krishna adopt that form in, in trying to reciprocate with that. And so Krishna is trying to taste Radha Bha. And his beauty is increasing as gore in such a way that, and, and the loving this, I mean, Krishna is appearing now in this, in this uniquely beautiful form as Mahaprabhu. And remember, the devotees service this position has, have to be at that level. So if Mahaprabhu's form is uniquely beautiful, the service disposition to that uniquely form has to be uniquely service disposition, <laughs> uniquely beautiful in itself. Mm -hmm. An increased service disposition to that increased beauty in Krishna's Mahaprabhu. So the point is, the love that we can have for Mahaprabhu is superlative, it's unique, because Mahaprabhu's beauty and form is superlative. So the necessity of service to that unique beauty in that form <laughs> has to be uniquely uh, paramount, if you will. Mm -hmm. So so that's how, how we find God in this most ultimate form. Mm -hmm. As I remember once, uh, as my Guru Mahesh likes to say, you know, God is mostly found in, in love of God. Once Sri, Sri Radhanath Maharaj say, like, it may be easy to deny the existence of God, but it's not that easy to deny the existence of love of God. Now, if you find someone who has love of God, it's difficult to, like, I'm not saying that nothing is going on because there will be so many extraordinary symptoms. Even to begin with about Upashama Ashrayama about and he's saying that person is fully self-control. We want to put that sadhu in his laboratory. <laughs> Let's objectively, I mean, that person is controlling his senses. He's like, oh my God, this is from other world. And that's, that's just the very basic foundation of, of what does it mean to have the love of God. So <clears throat> we can find God in love of God. So interestingly, not only we will find God in love of God, but somehow <laughs> here Krishna is trying to find himself in love of God. No? <laughs> in Radha's Mahabha. No? He's trying to find himself in a more expanded version. 
by going through that himself as, 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 as Mahaprabhu. Hmm? Hmm. So, some thoughts. I mean, I have some other thoughts, but I don't want to kill anyone from overdose. <laughs> Go or overdose. What do you think? Yeah, man. Oh. I mean, we can continue our day, but we can continue today. Maybe yeah. there's questions, and if you want to share more, then I think we're all here to hear it. Okay. You are totally spoiled by Hari Parsa Prabhu three hours per day, so it's okay, no problem. <laughs> I can continue speaking. That's he our, sent. Our fitness is up. He right? established a good standard. Okay, <laughs> you are ready for more. <laughs> uh, so as we mentioned, not only Mahaprabhu is Krishna's Mahaprabhu is tasting Radhava, but also he's committing himself to do something about it and trying to extend his own. I mean, he's sharing as Mahaprabhu is, again, the outcome of his own experience. Krishna is tasting something. That's the main purpose of his descent. Whatever he's tasting starts to overflow him and becomes his the secondary purpose for his descent, if you will. I mean, he comes as the Yuga Avatar, but his yoga avatar function becomes affected by the main purpose of his descent. So whatever he's giving in, in the context of normal yoga dharma, in this case, it's a very unique yoga dharma once in a day of Brahma, which becomes intertwined with what Mahaprabhu is tasting himself. So, <clears throat> so in this way, to begin with, I mean, I, I hope this is clear at this point that Gaur Lila is not only a bridge to Krishna Lila, but you can see that as an apex of Krishna Lila and the natural extension of Krishna Lila. Mm -hmm. And again, I like to, to say all these things because sometimes we may, even an, inadvertent, inadvertently, mm -hmm. take some aspects of Krishna consciousness for granted. Mm -hmm. no? Yeah, yeah, Gaur Lila, yeah. Mahaprabhu, yeah, Sankirtan. Most merciful. Most merciful. <laughs> and you're right, you're right in all those things, but you have not played out the implications of each of those things. Mm -hmm. no? that, that's the difference. In the beginning, we can receive the basic glossary, and it's okay. No? Mahavadan, Jaya, Harikira, it's okay. <laughs> but at some point in our trajectory, we will need to play out each one of those words. You go back to... <coughs> all of Prabhupada's books in the glossary, and you start to go term by term, mm -hmm. huh? and try to unpack all the implications of this term. Acharya, Arinam Sankirtan, Mahavadanya Avatar, Gaur Lila, and try to understand this is not only what I think it is. Uh, the worst possible thing that can happen is that we get to that point like, oh, I know that already. Mm -hmm. Mahaprabhu himself talked very differently. He will hear from Galadhar Pandit 108 times pralatchari which is basic in comparison to what he was about mm -hmm. in one sense. And he wanted to make that point. It's not that, oh, let's speak about Prahlad Maharaj. Oh, Maharaj, Prahlad Maharaj. That's basic. <laughs> or, or maybe it's not basic, but I know this story already. I read it like one time. <laughs> <laughs> Pro will hear that 108 and say, Anayor, Anayor, no? more, more. Like teaching to us this idea, no? do, do not take Krishna consciousness for granted. Do not think that by just memorizing certain official formulas, how to reply to certain questions, what to say, what to think, uh, there's no space for developing the Siddhanta. There's no space for contributing with new insights. I mean, that's parampara. If you want to keep the current alive, each member of, the, of our lineage has to contribute with your own insights. It's not just copy paste or pirating. I mean, there's two levels of pirating, of course. One level is just copy-paste, another level is Sukadev Goswami is pirating. No? He's biting the fruit and making it sweeter. <laughs> so you choose which type of pirate you want to be. <laughs> we have nothing against pirating, but there are degrees of that, basically. So, so we need, as I like to say, we need to go beyond the script at some point. Not beyond the scripture, but beyond the script, mm -hmm. beyond the official, like what to say, how to do, it's perfect. But on some level, as sometimes it's say, those who follow the rules nicely are the ones who know when to break the rules. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
um, break the rules not to transgress and do something immoral, but just to embrace it, a more comprehensive rule, deeper, and so on. <laughs> so here as in Mahaprabhu, we find that. We've, I'm not saying you go beyond the script yourself. Krishna is going beyond his own script as Mahaprabhu. Krishna has his script in, in Krishna Lila. No, I'm this and that. But in Gaur Lila, he's adopting another script, if you will. No? <laughs> so as I like to say, Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead. But as Mahaprabhu, he becomes the supreme personality of Krishna. <laughs> So he's going beyond his own script as gore, if you will. Mm -hmm. So if he's going that, doing that, we should be doing that to follow him. Mm -hmm. We worship a God beyond the script. We should go learn to go beyond the script. Again, not beyond the script, sure. I'm not just promoting whimsical anarchism or things like that. No? But we need to, <clears throat> to take the script, basically, and to ruminate. <laughs> on the script in such a way that it becomes another script now. Oh, no. Prahlad Maharaj will say, puna punas charbita char banana. What's the meaning of Chewing and chewing. And what's the implication of that? I mean, why Prahlad Maharaj is using that example? Promoting some bubble gum or anything? Yeah. No. <laughs> no that, that's material, material sense enjoyment is like chewing and chew. Okay. Enjoyment. Okay. But now we are applying that line in another context. No, you have to chew the chew. No? You receive some script, you receive some instruction, take that, make it your own, mm -hmm. ruminate on that, chew the chew, and Break something new, something new will come from that. No, sorry? Break it down. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Play out the implications of that, and you real realize, oh, so much was inside that. Mm -hmm. I thought that Guru Dev, the Vaishnava, gave me this, but now that I'm doing my homework, <laughs> so much further juice is coming from that, basically. And it was there, but I have to do my homework for that to happen. So Mahaprabhu is Krishna doing his homework uh, very nicely. He's a very good student, as we know. Krishna is a student <coughs> of Sri Radha in the school of Prem, as we said yesterday. So again, going beyond the script is not about transgression, but it's about playing out the implications of all that already we have received. So in that sense, I'm saying that Mahaprabhu is Krishna beyond the script, basically. It's Krishna beyond his own script in Krishna Lila and trying to learn and enact Radha's script, if you want to put it like that. No, he's trying to experience Radha Bha. So because of these and many other reasons for sure, <laughs> Mahaprabhu has been turned, for example, by um, Krishna Das Kavirat Goswami in Chaitanya Charitamrita. He has been described as Paratattva Simma. So Paratattva Simma means the highest reach of transcendence, the highest limit of the absolute, interestingly, establishing Mahaprabhu, if you will, above Krishna, quote unquote, again, we are not speaking about two different people here, <laughs> but the highest possible reach of Krishna, tasting something that he has no knowledge of, as Krishna in Brajalila, interestingly. And Sri Gaur Gobinda Maharaj also likes to invoke this type of ideas, he quoted once, on birth from Narahari Sarkar, who defines Mahaprabhu as Bhakti Naipunya, which means Gorlila is the same idea. It's the highest limit of Bhakti. You will experience that in Gorlila. He will give the example, Gor Gobinda Maharaj, he will say, it's like the mango. You have a white, um, green mango and a golden mango. So what's the difference? The golden mango is a ripe mango. So Mahaprabhu is a golden Mango, golden lord, if you will, Gaur Hari, Gaur Chandra. Hmm? So, <clears throat> and he will reply to that if someone will ask him, why Shama Sundar became Gaur Sundar? Hmm? What's the purpose behind that? And he will say, because in the former, Shama Sundar, the mellow is unripe. The mango is still green. No. <laughs> Thanks, Ananda Murray, for confirming <laughs> the points there. We need some cheerleaders here. <laughs> hmm? So that's why he had to, I mean, the mango needs to, to attain its point of proper taste. You said you have you have this saying in English, no? Like something mm, is the new black, right? Golden is the new black. <laughs> Gore is the new sham. Hmm? 
So that's the, the motto of Gorlil. <laughs> <laughs> you like that one? Okay. <laughs> I know which are the highlights for numbers. Uh, <laughs> golden is the new black. No? Gore is the new sham. Mm -hmm. So let's finish with some further ideas and we're closing here. Like, regarding this idea of ripeness and sweetness and, and mango <coughs> analogies and whatnot. <laughs> Sometimes we can give this example also, not like the, and for those who have been in India, especially in Mayapur, I will say you will know what I'm talking about. You have these people who sell like uh, sugar cane juice. Mm -hmm. uh, you have their machines for how they squeezing, mm -hmm. squeezing the the bamboo and sugar, sugar cane. Sorry. So, and they, they put the sugar cane ones. But goes again. Mm -hmm. It's not only once, but it's further squeezing, if you want to put it like that. Huh? So you put the, the sugar cane between the wheels, and juice is coming. Sugar cane again, further juice is coming. And this a good number of times. Mm -hmm. Hold it exactly. Right. All the possible things till the fullest juice is coming. <laughs> so we can give this example with the different phases of divinity, if you will. Further squeezing. No? You first put the first sugar cane absolute, <laughs> and will come some Narayan juice. <laughs> <laughs> With all respect for sure to Sri Vaishnavism. But if we squeeze more, <laughs> some further juice will come, and Sri Ramachandra will appear. No? But still, there's more juice to come. So, you again, another one, the same one Dwarkesh Krishna coming then you start to fold up the <laughs> the sugar cane still more Maturesh krishna but the client says still more mm -hmm. oh, i'm paying for for something put more there okay <laughs> more braji krishna so the the owner of the shop say okay that, i mean no more juice possible <laughs> one more squeezing is possible there some lemon and ginger, well, yeah. some lemon and ginger. <laughs> Add the necessary masala there, if you will. <laughs> and finally, Sriman Gorsundar is coming. And the, the, culminate, the culmination of squeezing the, the juice of, of the absolute. Paratattva Simba means that. Huh? So Gorsundar means that, basically, for us. The culmination of the, of the Krishna Lila, the highest reach of the Krishna Lila. Sometimes, as I mentioned yesterday, I think... <clears throat> Gaur Lila is described as Parishista Lila. Parishista is like the appendix of a book, not the appendix here, but in the book. <laughs> uh, that kind of completes the book. It's like an afterthought. We have Krishna Lila and Gaur Lila is the afterthought of Krishna Lila. After Krishna Lila, I mean, Krishna Das Kavirash Goswami shares that in the fourth chapter of Adi Lila. Krishna like reflecting back on Krishna Lila. On the love of different devotees for him, and all that takes him to say, I have to come back again as Mahaprabhu. So Gaur Lila is afterthought, Parishista Lila. <clears throat> and this Parishista Lila makes the whole book full, attain full circle, attain culmination. So what we find in the Bhagavad attains culmination in, in Chaitanya Charitamrita, if you will. That's a connection also you can find. The Gita concludes where the Bhagavatam begins. And Gita concludes where? Sarva Dharma Paritya Jam Amikam Sharanamra. That's the conclusion of the Gita. Where does the Bhagavatam begins? Dharma Praito Kaita Tra. Here, that's the same idea of the conclusion of the Gita. So where the Gita ends, Bhagavatam begins. Where does the Srimad Bhagavatam ends? Very last verse. Nama Sankirtanam Jasya Sarva Papa Pranas Nam Pranamoduka Samanas Tanamami Harim Puran. Last verse of Bhagavatam. Nama Sankirtan Amjasya. is throwing us at the feet of Nama Sankirtan. <laughs> so where the Bhagavatam Krishna Lila concludes, Gaur Lila, if you will, begins. My Guru Maharaj always likes poetically to mention Srila Vyasadev spoke the, the Bhagavatam in the Himalayas. Now he had this epiphany, his samadhi, where the Bhagavatam revealed to him that was high in the Himalayas. And the Himalayas is where the Ganga begins her journey, hmm? the, the, her earthly current, if you will. If you will. And in Navadvip, 
the Ganga reaches the Bay of Bengal and attains the ocean. If you want to put some poet poetry in between of this. So similarly, Gaur Lila begins, or if you will, Krishna Lila begins in the Himalayas as the Ganga with Sri Labhyasadev having that revelation. But that flow of Krishna Lila reaches the Bay of Bengal, reaches Navadvip, attains its point of culmination there. Yeah. The culmination of the Bhagavad, and that's why we have Chaitanya Bhagavad. There's another Bhagavad altogether. Srimad Bhagavad, Chaitanya Bhagavad. Bhagavad has to go on. Nityam Bhagavad, Sivaya. So in Navadvip, the, Ganges, the Ganga becomes stable up upon reaching the ocean. So similarly, we could say the, the Ganga there is not making further effort to move. You follow? I'm here. In other words, there's no necessary, there's not ne other necessary lila above Gaur Lila, if you will. No? Gaur Lila is the fulfillment of Krishna Lila. At that point, Krishna obtained his PhD as Mahaprabhu. Mm -hmm. That's other way of putting that in academic terms. Mahaprabhu is Krishna's obtaining his PhD. No? He attained what he wanted to attain. <laughs> And of course, if we have the fortune of, and with this I'd like to conclude, if we have the fortune of being speaking about the things today, being hearing about the things today, that is because of Mahaprabhu's extreme compassion. Mm -hmm. As Guru Gobinda Maharaj will explain, Mahabadan Yavatar means he has to be given the highest thing even to the lowest. Mm -hmm. If you if not, you you cannot receive that label, that title, Mahabadanja. If you are given the highest to the highest, that's like an elite thing. <laughs> or if, okay, if you are given the lower to the lowest to the lowest, that's another way of elite. <laughs> but if you are given the highest even to the lowest, which we spoke the other day, what makes us worthy of costless grace? That we are unworthy. So that's the principle here in Gaur Lila. So Mahaprabhu is given the highest, but before given the highest, he is tasting the highest. So first he's tasting the highest, then he's sharing his remnants of his own experience and extending that to the most <clears throat> undeserving ones. So in that sense, we could say Mahaprabhu is the highest form of divinity because he's giving what nobody else gave. And in order to give that, he's tasting first that. As, as I quoted in the Mangala Charan Srila uh, Rupa Goswami, quotes in Namashtrakam this idea. I mean, that's another verse. But he's saying, between the name of Krishna and Krishna, there's no difference. But then he will say, but if you would like to see a difference, we always like to see differences. <laughs> say, okay, I accept, there is one difference. So what's that difference? That Nam is more generous than Nami, than the names. The name is more merciful than the names. Hmm? So there's no difference between Krishna Lila and Gaur Lila, similarly. But if you want to make one difference, <laughs> we can, following the footsteps of Rupa Goswami. He says, Gaur Lila is more merciful. Audarya Lila. Hmm? Because what is being given. And because, again, for that to be being given, it has to be tasted first. So in that sense, Gaur Lila is also most special because something that has not been given in Krishna Lila is being given and something that has not been tasted in Krishna Lila is being first tasted in order to be given. <laughs> so Mahaprabhu is relishing something, but again, he's not a selfish relisher. Oh, this is so nice, so good. It's only for me. I keep it for myself. He's distributing that as much as he can. He's the one that relishes the most, and he's the one that distributes the most. <laughs> These are some of the implications of him being Mahavadanja avatar. He's in the mood of Sri Radha, in the mood of the highest madness of Sri Radha. And when you are mad, you may do some things that you won't do if you are not mad, <laughs> basically. So you are giving some stuff indiscri indiscriminately, without filter, which seems like, how you are giving that much to to the to that guy, Padmana Mara from Argentina? How can you give that to that underserving, insignificant fellow there? But madness is madness, basically. So Mahaprabhu is 
Krishna in the mood of Sri, in the madness of Sri Radha. Uh, and of course, we are the blessed ones in that connection, no? tasting the, the highest zenith of Bhagavatam in the form of Lord Lila. Can I conclude reading one brief paragraph from, from my book in that connection? Mm. Let's see. Because, yeah, this is coming to my mind here. It's not about inherent or inherited. It's a conclusion. Somehow it's connected, but for those who want to follow page 331, at least I see someone there with the book. <laughs> so this is almost a conclusion, the conclu conclu concluding words of the book, which the title, subtitle is Sri Gore, the two Bhagavatas and the jewels of Prem. So it's one page and a half with your permission and we'll close there. It says like this. As has been shown, Braja Prem descends straight, straight from Golok and approaches us in the most generous way through the agency of the book Bhagavat and the person Bhagavat, both the ultimately personified in the figure of Sri Gaur Krishna and his compassionate agents, the sadhus. Their unrepayable dispensation could be compared to when a homeless person by being in the right place at the right time, suddenly becomes rich without deserving it at all. Without such a stroke of good fortune, our attempts could be compared with trying to acquire the supramundane shamantaka or kastuba jewels by way of money, gold, or any other earthly gems. These jewels are rightfully enjoyed by Bhagavan and his entourage and can be experienced by ordinary people only through some close friend of theirs. Similarly, bhakti is like a great transcendental jewel, and apart from the costless mercy of one of one of Bhagavan's nearest and dearest, the person Bhagavat, there is no other way to obtain that precious touchstone. Likewise, the book Bhagavat, which comes to us through the person Bhagavat, is not an exception to this rule, and its very name bears witness to this. As Gaudias embraced the Bhagavad according to how Mahaprabhu himself embraced it, the result of such an embrace has taken the form of a remarkable epithet, Srimad Bhagavatam. While the term Bhagavatam denotes something related or belonging to Sri Bhagavan, the esoteric term Srimad points to Bhakti in its ultimate expression of personified Mahabhav, Sri Radha. This Mahabha verily implies divine frenzy, which represents the definitive converging point of the whole Bhagavad. And in this way, Sri Mad refers to the madness, Mad, of Radha, Sri. Mm -hmm. Sri Mad. Mad also means madness in English, but in Sanskrit, Mada means madness. So Radha, name for Radha is Sri. So Sri Mad means the madness of Sri for Bhagavan, Bhagavan. So in this way, Sri Mad refers to the madness, Mada of Radha, Sri, in her loving interaction with Bhagavan Sri Krishna. Thus, we Gaudias also call it Sri Mad Bhagavatam or Radha Bhagavatam. But such concept begs for further development, which plays out in the very apex of the Bhagavatam, in which Sri Hari contemplates Radha's Mahabhav and becomes greedy to taste it thus giving rise to Gaur Lila, what we explained today. Here, Raja Krishna drenches himself in the glory of Radha's experience to such a point that her Mahabhav becomes his, her madness becoming his own. It is in the midst of this pandemonium that three Gaur Sundar then relishes Radha's Mahabhav, but the experience overflows from him, splashing whoever is nearby, including undeserving passers-by such as us. This is just like if the wife of a rich man goes mad and suddenly throws all of her jewelry from her rooftop, making even the poorest of people rich, though they have no merit whatsoever. And when her millionaire husband sees this, he has no problem at all since he knows the extent of his own wealth. Correspondingly, the Srimad Bhagavatam ultimately speaks to us about the mad of Sri for Bhagavan, in which all her jewels of bhakti are indiscriminately delivered in the madness of Mahabhav to one and all, 
in the topmost expression of compassionate love as Sri Krishna Chaitanya. Needless to say, we are those most fortunate redeemed paupers in this magical story. Sheman <laughs> Gorsundar Ki Jai. Anyhow, some thoughts we want to share today about hopefully there was a good dive into Gorlila. <laughs> Which, as you may see, I'm not maybe narrating that much of Lila in itself, but trying to share more like the ontology and the greatness behind the Lila. So, you know, if we have some minutes for some, if there is any questions, so we are already in time. Um, why does Krishna consider himself such a rascal? Because he will do what he's doing. Why does he consider it to be such rascal behavior? Mm -hmm. Because he knows he's breaking their hearts. Because they want only him exclusively him and him not to be delivered to others, or is it because he really believes his behavior is rascal like? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if I maybe used the correct word in this case, but when I say that Krishna considers himself a rascal <laughs> or a criminal, or if, if, if we are, I mean, if you refer to the moment when he is returning back to the gopis after they were singing Gopi Gita. He's mostly doing that because he feels, again, that they love him so much, <clears throat> exclusively, and basically he's not able to repay back. No, that, that's mainly the, the idea, no? like deep humility. Like, I feel you're giving yourself to me so much, and especially the gopis, because the gopis have parakya bhav, which is a type of love in, in which you have to reject everything else and everyone else in order to attain Krishna. You follow my point, for example, I don't know, let's say Sridham, Subal, some of the friends of Krishna, they they don't need to reject other friends to love Krishna, if you want to put it like that. Just show that doesn't need to reject Nanda Maharaj to love Krishna. <laughs> but the gopis need to reject their husband, everything to love in the sense of that's clandestine in the, in the dynamics of the Lila. Nobody can know about that. <laughs> so they are doing that. They are rejecting everything for the sake of Krishna. And Krishna is thinking, I cannot do that. It's not possible for me to do that. So you are do you are giving yourself to me in such a degree that it, by comparison, I'm a rascal. I mean, he's in one sense, of course, not a rascal and not a criminal, but in his subjective experience, in, in, in contrast <clears throat> with the degree of love he's witnessing, he will feel. Like we said the other day, Bhakti Thakur is full of Prem, but Prem can expand so much that he will say sometimes, I'm full of lust. Mm -hmm. It's not that he's, he's actually full of lust, but he, he sees so much more Prem can be attained that in comparison, whatever pain I have, it's lust. Of course, we won't agree with him. <laughs> <laughs> we will sing the song and make it our own <laughs> on another level. Uh, so similarly, he will say, I'm full of lust, but actually he's not full of lust. So Krishna is saying, I'm criminal and a rascal. We will say, we know he's not. <clears throat> I mean, he may, in, in Lila, Manjaris and so on will call him a rascal and so on, but that's again in the dynamics of the Lila, and criminal even. But, <laughs> but the point is both basically that direction. No? Krishna is feeling so much indebted, no? His Krishna is feeling, I've taken so much from you, if you will. I've received so much, and I'm not giving. So it's kind of compared to, it's so unpro unproportionate that it can be compared to a theft, basically. You know? If you give me a lot, a lot, and I'm just giving you nothing almost, you will think, I'm practically stealing from you. I'm exploiting you. So, so that's how Krishna feels subjectively. And that's of course, speaks about his non rascal ness if you will. No? I mean, he's such a great personality that he will feel like that for himself. But actually, we know that, that that's not that's not the case, if you will. No? So that will be basically the idea. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Um, so you mentioned how uh, Krishna has has a beauty and the devotees uh, try to serve him to that beauty and mm. increase his beauty. Krishna Daskara says that. Yeah. yeah. So. So now Krishna <clears throat> has uh, has kind of repaid what the gopis wanted. 
or he's trying his best, but that's <laughs> not happening. <laughs> that's what, uh, yeah. You continue, so, continue. So does the gopis or Srimad Radharani ever feel indebtedness to Krishna? Like, do they have the same mood that Krishna has now? Mm. Do they also re reciprocate that kind mm. of mood at times? Mm. Well, some things to say in that connection. One, to begin with, as you mentioned, okay, Krishna's Mahaprabhu is trying to repay the gopis and, and trying to experience Radha Bhav. And, but how to say? He will never be able to fully repay, nor he will ever be able to fully experience Radha Bhav because Radha Bhav is a bottomless ocean. So there's no end to that. And that's why Gaur Lila is eternal. <laughs> For me, the main reason how to explain Gorlila is eternal because there's no end to tasting Radha Bhav. So Krishna is dedicated in a separate eternal Lila to taste that forever. <laughs> it's not that he tasted the fullness of Radha Bhav and that's all. No need for further Gorlila. Yeah, I mean, there's no end to that. So one level, you, in one sense, you can say that. And in connection to the gopis or trying to reciprocate to Krishna and so on, of course, they... They do so and they continue doing so at every moment. And that was just further increasing Krishna's death in that connection. Because, for example, where when Krishna <clears throat> appears, returns in the Braja from the in the Rasa Lila and is telling the gopis again, I cannot repay back, and so on. What I said, actually, the gopis will, in their own situation, will think, Oh, we thought that Krishna left us for some other reason, but actually we realized his integrity and nobility. We were just criticizing him, but actually he was thinking the best for us. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's so special. And they felt themselves, we are such rascals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so that's the nature of love. The two parties will feel, I am the rascal. Uh, no, I am the rascal. Uh, I don't love you. Uh, I don't love you, uh, if you will. No? That, that's a, the competition. No? In, 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 in Prem Samput, this idea is given by, by Sri Radha herself. She says, if someone says, I love you, that person knows nothing about love mm -hmm. for two reasons. Why? First, because you can always love more than person. So you will, if you really have a glimpse of what it means to love, you will realize <clears throat> this never ends. So I can, if I say I love you, it means I have limited the scope of that. And second, if I really love someone, there won't be a separate sense of being from me and they will love. So I won't say, I love you. Because one of the creatures of love is pranai. Pranai means you and I become one in love. Not in personalist way, but in a dynamic way. Your body is my body and so on. <clears throat> so, so, of course, again, Radha and the gopis are always reciprocating with Krishna. And we could say, and we could maybe we'll speak about that a little bit tomorrow. That's on another level, even. If you think this is this level, tomorrow, fasten your seatbelt. Uh, because, for example, if you say, okay, Ma Krishna appears as Mahaprabhu to repay Sri Radha somehow, to try. So what does Sri Radha do, da do about that? Okay, she will appear as Gadadhar Pandit in Gaur Lila. And she will offer herself, himself, herself, in a very unique way to allow Gaur to allow Mahaprabhu to be successful, basically. I mean, because Kaladar Pandit is Sri Radha giving her bhav, so Krishna can taste that as Mahaprabhu. Mm. If Sri Radha is not, if Kaladar is not doing that, Mahaprabhu is not successful. The whole Gorlila will be a failure. <laughs> so Kaladar Pandit is allowing all that to happen. Although he is the less generally known person in the whole Gorlila, and you will hear the less about him. He's in the back of the court and allowing everything to happen, <laughs> orchestrating the whole living in the deepest sense. So we'll speak tomorrow a little bit about that and, and how Radha in Gorlila is reciprocating to Krishna's attempt to give himself to her and so on. But today maybe we can stop here and continue mm -hmm. tomorrow. Or no, I don't know if tomorrow. Or oh, we just decided what we're doing tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> <Evil. Yeah. laughs> We continue tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Jai Shri Laguru Dev ki Jai Shri Man Mahaprabhu ki Jai Shri Hari Nam Sankirtan ki Jai Shri Shri Gornitananda ki Jai.
श्री कोर ले लखी जाय गौर भक्त वृंद की जाय गौर प्रमाण जीवो वंचा कल्पत रूप्य शाग्रिपा सिंधु भेय वंचा पति तानं भवानेप्यो वैष्णवेप्य नमोन महानंत कोति वैष्णव वृंद की जाय 